Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer, author and entrepreneur sales coach. Tune in weekly for Human Conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. So grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy. Here is your host, Jules White. Welcome everybody to the Human Conversation. I've got a beautiful lady with me today. She is called Janine Capaldi and she's from Capaldi Marketing. She is the director there. And I'm so happy to have you here, Janine. We've met on LinkedIn, mm. but we are literally down the road from each other and we still haven't met, have we? I know. It is, must be about 25, 30 minutes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so you're just down the road in Hertfordshire. You run this fabulous business. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about what you do and then we'll go deeper in and have a fabulous human conversation. Sure. Good, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, so I, um, I ran uh, Run Capaldi Marketing. It's a lead generation agency for one of a better description. Um, so we work with um, different kinds of organisations, um, usually B2B, and then we do work with um, a number of non-profits on generating leads for their business through various ways. It, it te- typically, we work a lot on LinkedIn and showing people how to make the most out of LinkedIn not limited to LinkedIn. Um, And we provide um, either in-house services, training, um, coaching on individuals, a whole a whole mix. But um, what brings it together is is generating generating targeted business needs. And when I say we, I run it with my husband, which has um, a whole host of interesting dynamics, I guess you can, uh, I could say. But yeah, it's, um, we've been going for um, about three years now. Yeah. That's wonderful. And of course, um, I was actually going to say, and who do you run the business with? And of, course you, <laughs> of course, you've told us. And it's interesting because I run a business with my husband. Unfortunately, he's my ex-husband now. Um, and I don't want to sort of make any <laughs> references in that direction. But, um, uh, I did run a business with him for, for a long time. And do you know what? We worked beautifully together. Actually, we worked okay. better together than we were actually married. Um, mm. because our skill sets were slightly different so actually we really yeah. complemented each other I found that he was very much three years ahead on the next big idea and then I was the one who went what should we do now then should we sell this now you know should we, should we do this now and so we yeah. had this wonderful synergy because of mm. that and it did work mm. we, we just couldn't be married to each other <laughs> which was the sad bit so yeah. how, how does it work for you and Jamie yeah it's um, I wouldn't say it's always easy. I think that we've come, we've we've certainly got a flow now that works much better than it did when we first started. I think because, um, like you know, we've never done we've never done it before. You know, we've been we've been to we've been together fifteen years, married five, worked together for three. So it it you know it was a very 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 new element to what to what we were doing. But I think that I guess. Like, I guess like you we've got our own we've got our own skill sets and they're very different um and they do complement each other and allow us to have I guess allow us to have really frank conversations about um about you know about certain decisions we're making and our yeah. opinion on certain things so you know for that it's for that it's great I think the you know the one thing that um increasingly is important which has been difficult over the last few months is I guess it's the boundaries between you know work husband and wife mum and dad and you know that can get very quickly and easily blurred um so I think that's you know that's the one thing that is is important to both of us to know that we've got you know we've maintained those boundaries because um yeah, you can't, it's not that easy to come home at the end of the day and have a moan to your husband about how someone really got on your nerves at work because <laughs> it was him. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's so funny, isn't it? But it is an interesting subject. I want to just uh, just explore it just a little bit more because it is so interesting. You are a husband and wife, your business partners, your parents. You know, mm. you have three really 
different roles there that you have to work with. Yeah. What's the kind of one tip do you think that you would give anyone if they asked you about creating those boundaries? What what is it that you do that oh, helps? Yeah, and I and I guess I say this as the like we don't always get this right, so I guess yeah. I, it's not all right. But but when it's working well, you think I can I can see how that happens. I think the most important thing is still have the space from each other so just because you are working together doesn't mean that you have to be in each other's pockets working on it every, every single thing all the time so I think that that I guess that's the tip I would give is that um you know you've got to be you've got to be realistic you are going to be spending a lot of time together and you're going to be making very different decisions depending on what's going on whether you're just talking about making dinner or something you've got to decide about that you know one of the kids is playing up how do you deal with that or you know you've got something coming from a client and you want to make the most out of it and you really want someone's insight I think it's I think that you've almost got to the thing that's worked well is, is almost like when you book time in with each other for certain things rather than interrupting each other's flow I think that is that's where it can really um, it can really cause like uh, attention. Um, whereas I think if you can be respectful of each other's time and what's going on for each other, then you you will you'll you'll have some decent conversations rather than irritable ones. I suppose. It's a really good point, though, Janine, because um, you know I I think about the fact that. Well, firstly, I never book any me time and I'm sort of doing this on my own. And so I've started to put in my diary me time. Mm. If I didn't put it in my diary, I actually wouldn't take it. It's not yeah. worked out. Someone else is going to get in there and it's going to take up my time. That was one thing. But also this whole point of, um, you know, just because you're married and maybe you're working out of home, which a lot of us have been doing anyway with pandemic doesn't mean to say you don't respect each other's time and, and as you say in an office you would have to book in a meeting or an appointment with a colleague wouldn't you mm. so I love that you have got that as perhaps a, a thing that you do I think it's interesting Sam will come in in the middle of the day and he'll say oh mom 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 like this and I, and I said to him once because I was right in the middle of something I said oh Sam do you know what I know I said it nicely I said, <laughs> do you know what I said I know I'm not in an office so I'm not not here but I'm still working I said and sometimes it might feel like I'm ignoring you but it's because I'm right in the middle of doing something because he thinks I'm sitting here I might be on the settee or at the breakfast yeah bar. it's interesting yeah. dynamics isn't it yeah it is it is and I think that you know the benefit for us too is that we both we both get it we both understand it and I think that all the you know the lockdown shenanigans started happening I felt like we had such a huge head start on a lot of our um I guess a lot of our friends and a lot of our family that were going through the same kind of thing who were you know they'd never worked alongside each other okay they weren't working together but they were working alongside having to split childcare, having to split work time having to schedule in meetings they it was you know it is it, it's so intense Whereas Jamie and I were like, okay, well, we've, we've done this for a few years now. So, you know, you take this time, I'll take this time, I'll have the kids, you do this, you know. So, it, yeah, you th those boundaries are really important. And, uh, yeah, we, we certainly haven't managed to sort that out with the, the, with the children. We still get, you know, even today I have my laptop slammed down as I... As, as I left the game of um, what was it lizards versus crocodiles I think <laughs> and, um, and was told no no this is not happening right now all right <laughs> okay then yeah this is real life isn't it this is real life as an entrepreneur I love it Janine okay, well, look, um, I, I love that we touched on that sort of stuff because I think sometimes people don't talk about it and there'll be a lot of people working from home even if they're not running a business together they might be running two businesses from the same house Else. it's the same kind of principles yeah. isn't it really so so thank you for your insights because I hope that might help some of our listeners you know it's it's interesting stuff isn't it I want to find out where it all started with Janine so you're running <laughs> this this fabulous business which I, I know you've got a great great business we'll talk more about that but where did you start in your career what happened for you yeah I um it, it's funny that I think of it as a career because I, I think until I started this, until we started our business, I didn't really feel like I had a career at all, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I always liked the work that I did, but I never felt, yeah, it was, 
it's it was always part of my life and what I did and how I spent my time ultimately what I wanted was to you know I always wanted to have a family and I had these visions of you know when I have my children I'll my life will be complete I'll be you know it will all be done and I love them absolutely and but if anything it made me go the other way where I was like no I I need things for me it's it, it, it was I don't know why but it was just something that I couldn't see beforehand yeah um but yeah in terms of my background I've, I've always been in in events and um, conferences, exhibitions, organising big events where I used to run events um, for The Guardian and then I moved into um, kind of charity sector and worked primarily um, in education and then I then I started um, coaching training so that must have been about I think that must have been like 2010 something like that. I really got a taste for the personal development side and then I, I did a further four years of psychotherapy training convinced I was going to come out of this a psychotherapist <laughs> and then realizing I was not going to be a psychotherapist mm-hmm. I just loved all of the knowledge I gained about people how yeah. we might be thinking how we might be feeling what we might say or do that that could have lasting effects on someone else without even knowing it like thinking about you know what we've been told as children or what we perceive we've been told as children to how that has led us to where where we were and I think actually that's why I didn't really ever think of myself as having a career because you know I've got two incredibly nurturing parents one of which has always been um you know kind of it's, it's kind of been more about playing it safe being comforted being comfortable and so I think that's probably why I, I kind of just ticked along you know, I always did fine, but I just ticked along. Yeah. And I think co- going through all of that personal development training made me think, no, I don't want to just tick along. That's not what I'm going to, that's not who I'm going to be now. I'm going to be someone that, that achieves and does more and does it for themselves and isn't quite so scared to do whatever it might be. And that's where it all came from, really. Like it was my coaching background, Jamie's marketing and sales expertise put together, tested out one too many times you know this is what works now (laughs) I love I love how you sort of had this kind of discovery you know that there's something more that's Mm. really quite fascinating isn't it and you're absolutely right that all of that training has undoubtedly helped you in what you're now doing in business Mm. and it's same with me where you know I love people and I guess that's my driver with my sales coaching and how I do it is because it's all about humans and people and that's my Mm. focus and I know you think the same as me in that respect because we're very aligned aren't we so it's really lovely but so, you know, th- this sort of, I've not had a career as such is, is well, not quite true, really, Janine, let's face it. <laughs> no, it's, I I know, it's, it's not, it's not. <laughs> but I guess I never really, um, I perhaps I just never valued it. I think yeah. maybe that was what it was. I never really saw what I was doing as significant or important. And it was yeah. probably because I wasn't truly doing what I was best at perhaps yeah I think maybe that's what it is and when you mentioned as well it really resonated with me about you know just wanting to have that family and you thought once that happened that would be it you know your life would be complete and then needing more once you got there because it's like anything we don't know what it feels like until we become parents you can't tell anyone can you Janine you know (laughs) you can't tell them about the love the deep love that you feel but the other side of that for me and many other women, I think, and maybe even men as well, let's let's bring them into this too, was the loss of identity. Mm. So suddenly you become your child's mum, like Sam's mum, as opposed to Jules. And that was a really big thing for a lot of people I met when I had my yeah. first business. So did you did you get that feeling as well? Yeah, t- totally, totally. I think I there was a lot that I blocked out on the run-up I think to having um my first son Leo because I just thought nah that what you know that I don't really need to worry I don't need to bother about with that like I'll be fine with that and actually all the things that I didn't really address like the lack of sleep like the constant attention like you know whether you're weighing up going out for a walk or napping because there's no way you can possibly do both um (laughs) well you can after a while but at that point I just couldn't get my head around it 
like they were all things that kind of came at me and, and I thought oh my goodness I, d- I don't really know who I am and what's happening now and I mean I was really fortunate that I'd um, found very quickly a group of other mums that were all had children at the same you know they had their, their children at the same time as me you know they were right in the middle of their career and they, and they, they were not going to stop and that to me was really encouraging. It almost like it, it for me, it almost went from finding it intimidating, I guess, to then using it to fuel what I wanted as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I certainly, I certainly did feel that for a while. Um, not at all with the second one. I think I just, I got into it by then and I was just, yeah. It was You're a pro. Yeah. <laughs> you pro by then. <laughs> yeah, although there's no way I'd have another one. No, two two is that's it, yeah. You would all go completely downhill <laughs> after that, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I I did I did fit I did find that and it took a long time to piece it back together and um and I really I really do feel for my friends now that are you know that are just having just having children now because I can see them going through it and I don't think they quite believe me that you do come out of it but you do you do come out of it but I don't think some of them are quite there yet I think they're just like yeah I don't believe it because it's not happening yet (laughs) yeah no you definitely come out of it you you become of this becomes your life so you Mm. you adjust again it's like all these comfort zones isn't it each time you step out of them then that becomes the new comfort zone yeah it's that stuff isn't it yeah so tell, tell me a bit more about your business because obviously um you've got a fabulous little business there with Jamie and you talk about lead generation. Um, I want to ask you about pandemic because Mm -hmm. obviously, you know, if anyone's listening in two years time, um, we're kind of still in it here right now, aren't we, Janine? (laughs) Our children are probably going back to school next week. I say probably because who knows, but yeah, we think so. I'm keeping everything (laughs) in the nicest way. (laughs) But we've been through a really interesting and strange and challenging year. So how has it been for you with your business uh, going through this, this year? Yeah, it's um I I am exhausted. The logistics of it all have been have been exhausting. The growth and how the business has been, it that hasn't that actually we've been very we've been very fortunate. We like that hasn't stopped. And if anything, we've had um more conversations and more people wanting to talk to us. They've had time to take stock and reflect and look at things that they can do that is gonna drive, you know drive more com- more conversations ultimately for a lot of people and so from that side of things it's been it's been really positive the challenge has been managing that alongside the fact that you know we've been working ridiculously reduced hours while we've while we've got the children or working late so when you just want to go to bed so that has been a challenge kind of like managing that and what I guess the other thing, and, and there's, you know, and there's been one arm of it, so the tra- the training side, which definitely took a bit of a dip at first because people just weren't talking about it. So I think like a lot of businesses, you know, you have conversations flowing, you have proposals almost ready to get signed off, and then actually, you know, everything's on hold for the moment. So, you know, we've not we've not avoided things entirely, but what we what we have done is we just haven't we we just didn't stop you know we never made those assumptions of um no one's gonna buy no one wants to talk um or it's a sense it's too sensitive an issue what we did is we you know we we took what was going on and used that to create our conversations rather than mm-hmm. rather than trying to avoid it and pretend everything's okay we used it to start honest conversations with people and I think that's the thing that's been you know that the fact that we didn't take the foot off the pedal in our own business development has been what has what has been successful. I think what's happened that I've seen is people have either gone into panic and desperation mode selling in this horrible, horrible pushy way again. You know the kind of eighties styly. You know it's made me shudder some of the stuff I've seen coming through. Mm-hmm. Or like you say, they've gone into hibernation and said, well, we can't really sell at the moment. We just can't sell, can you, with it, with what's going on? And I think your approach is perfect in that it's about having conversations. You know, yeah. that's that's what we have to do. We have to meet our customers and clients where they are now. Exactly. And they'll all be different. You know, much as we said at the beginning, we're all in this together. Um, and I did. I said that too because I was like, well, we are. 
actually I think I described it in a webinar once that we were in different ships in the same storm yeah that was probably a really good way to to analyze Mm. it Mm. and so I love that approach that you've had I mean I personally lost a chunk because of public speaking and workshops which yeah I'm sure you would have seen as well but yeah I, I flipped onto line you know I put stuff online as quick as I could I bet you did that too didn't you Janine yeah we did I mean we we again we were fortunate in that a lot of our work is online and we do a lot of our we do a lot of our training online anyway um I love I love the way that you can work with people in that capacity in that you can be you know you you could be with them for a couple of hours, but over a period of, you know, a month or so, as opposed to just like, right, you've just got me for a day yeah. and I'll see you later. I love it that you can, you know, you can be with somebody or a group of people as they continue to grow and develop and you're there for them, mm-hmm. um, you know, for questions and accountability. And so I, I think because I already, it's much easier, I guess, to be able to talk to them about that way when you truly believe that it's the best option anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that has been great and just lovely for me because I, you know, you get to spend all this time with people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think, you know, what you said about, you know, just finding people where, where, where they are at, you just don't know. And so, you know, I think, well, so I could make an assumption and my assumption might be right that, that they can't do anything right now. But but that could have happened anyway. And actually, all I want to do is, is have a conversation, you know, very transparently to find out more about them, to tell them more about me and see if there's any fit either now for the future, whatever that may be. You know, it's like you said, you know, we're, we are all going through the same thing, but everybody's experiences are really different. You know, for Jamie mm-hmm. and I, it's incredibly full on. You know, for my sister, she owns a beauty salon and she had to stop the, you know, kind of shut the entire business down and has still got team on furlough. Everyone's got their different version of events, haven't they? Yeah, it's really sad for your sister as well, because that, that industry, well, there's, there's a few industries that have been hit very, very hard. I, yeah. was in the, I was in the venues industry, so I, I was a head of sales in a venue. And I do sometimes look and think, gosh, what would that be like now for me? You know, yeah. Maybe I might have actually lost my job for all mm. I know. You know, you mm. just don't know, do you? So no. less to be where I am and enjoying actually this journey in my business, because like you, I've been busy. Um, I've had to adapt, you know, and I don't know what's going to happen for the rest of the year. None of us do. But it's about mm. that attitude and keeping positive and just believing in what you do, I think. And I see that a lot in you, in, in how you work, you know. Yeah, I thank you. I appreciate that. I, I mean, I've had, you know, we, I, we have definitely had our wobbles. I got told off in no uncertain terms a week or so ago for, you know, for, for moping. You know, I have gone very up and down at, at certain points. And sometimes I haven't been able to really, you know, put my finger on on what the root cause of it is, other than just you're consumed by everything that's going on for you, mm-hmm. for other people. Being open to problem solving and finding solutions and stuff, it doesn't mean you have to be happy, happy, positive all of the time. I think it just, in my opinion, it just means that, like for me, it might be that I can let myself wallow for a little while, but then I get fed up of that, and there'll be something that comes through that will go right okay come on enough now let's let's move on yeah so yeah that's and and you know sometimes I need a bit of a shove from someone (laughs) well I'll tell you what you're human which actually is very reassuring because if you were always upbeat then there'd be something very strange I think wouldn't there going on you know we we were all going to have that happen for us Mm -hmm. I want to know what your business why is Janine you know because to be in a business with your husband you know there's a lot of commitment all around all of the things you've talked about so far Mm -hmm. there's got to be a probably I would say a deeper why as to why you do what you do what do you what do you want to share with us I it probably sounds a bit I don't know if this sounds a bit naff (laughs) but I'm not going to edit it out if you think it sounds naff because I might like it (laughs) you'll get me a t-shirt with it yeah I just really love it when I know that we've been able to help someone else grow in some way so regardless of what the business is and I guess this is where the, this is, is likely where the coaching and the therapy side comes in as well but to me yes it's brilliant when I can see that we've been able to you know line a business up with another business and that there could be a lot of opportunity there for them but it's that that I love it's the difference that that can make for 
that business. You know, to me, it's not just, you know, all oh, right, a person, a person, there we go, to go, you know, hand, hand you over. It's the, it's the potential that that could bring to the growth of someone else's business or charity or organisation, whatever it might be. That's the bit, the business why. Yeah. And I guess personally, it, it is being able to make my own decisions. Yeah. They might not always be right, but it is that freedom to know that, you know, you, I'm only reporting to me and I, I can, in reason, do it when I want and where I want. That feels very special. It is special. And also the freedom piece is really important. When you think about the roles you're running in your life as mum and as wife and as director, you know, you do need that element of being able to have that freedom so that that does work in the right way. So I totally get that. You just made me inspired to do a post on LinkedIn about what type of boss are you to yourself? (laughs) Because um, I'm a terrible boss. I'm a slave driver. I'm never satisfied I expect me to work overtime every single night (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, I yeah I think your boss has been chatting to my boss because (laughs) because mine does a lot of that as well it's not good enough (laughs) (laughs) so just kind of to sort of bring this to a close which I always feel sad about because I love my guests and I could talk forever as you know but um, how do you help your clients? Let's go into a little bit more detail about what it is. If I come to you, Janine, what is it that you're going to help me with? So ultimately, we will be helping you to um, create more opportunities for your business. We will be um, helping you to, to, to really showcase you, your brand, what you're about. And we will be finding targeted leads for you or showing you exactly how to do that in a very I guess to use your words, human to human way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you you talked about Jamie having the kind of marketing background. Mm. So does he put together things like the creative side of stuff? Is that how it works for you too? Yeah, we there's a lot of things that we work on together. I mean, he I would say that he 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 leads more so on the you know the, the business development side, I would say that he he leads more so on than, than myself. And I lead more on the the day to day account management, looking after our clients, training people, that kind of thing. He's your your kind of strategy ideas. Let and I'm your right. Let's take that and get it into the day to day. This is what it how it works in yeah. practice. He's certainly got that kind of bigger picture. Create you know creative eye. I don't necessarily have. It's a great partnership actually. If you've both got that skill set and then that that together it is mm. it's really good I think it sounds great doesn't it it works well the one downside is that there isn't a boss in this business <laughs> that, is not, that is nice that does tell you to just you know call it a night <laughs> that person doesn't exist doesn't here exist, yeah <laughs> who's your ideal client then if you're out there actually really who do you love working with it's less about the actual business or organisation. In fact, I think we talked about this a little bit previously. And it's often more about the person or their approach or the way that they're doing things. I mean, for us, it's always it's always great that the person that we're going to work with has got sales processes lined up or that they will take on board how to manage a pipeline that, you know, some, that you can't just send somebody a message and then Bob's your uncle, you've got a phone call. Um, doesn't mean that you shouldn't expect results far from it but that you know it is, it is typically somebody who understands that you know building relationships over time are a really great way of, of working with somebody and it's typically someone who's got a great product service or offer to sell and is really clear on who their ideal clients are and how they can help them when someone has that and they know they know exactly who they who they want to work with they know that what they have is going to help them and they, you know, they, they are genuinely interested in building those relationships up and managing them. That is an, that's an ideal person for us. Yeah, no, it sounds, it sounds fair enough. So they could be potentially then an entrepreneur, you know, a solopreneur or a business with, with a team either. Yeah, 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 they really could. I mean, we, you know, people that we work with, people that it's just it's them in their business. Um, and then, you know, going up from businesses of like 5,000 plus, it's really it, where we might work with one, you know, one team, one sales and marketing team, one business development team. 
it's quite varied in terms of the, the size and that will determine really like how what our approach is so it's very consultative really then isn't it it's about mm. actually what's the outcome I want and then you kind of design the elements that potentially they're going to need to get that outcome it, I guess yeah for sure and I mean I think this is something that's become apparent probably leads a little bit to what you were saying about some of the, the pushy messaging and the pushy approach sales approaches that have been happening over the last few months is that the couple of the most recent contracts that Jamie has secured, he has secured them based on the fact that he has been able to fully demonstrate that this is not necessarily a one size fits all, that the way that this is going to work is by us truly understanding the organisation, their needs, their approach, their service their clients their customers what's going on for them again well no this is how we do it so you either do it this way or you, or you don't yeah. and I think so so in that way I think yes it is very positive because because you do need to tap into all of that you can't just you know you you can't just take the yes you could look at a template and might whatever it might be but you're always going to have to adapt and change it and work out how that's going to work you know yeah. for you and your business and your clients so yeah. That's the yeah. That's the important thing for us. It's it's not a it's not a one size fits all. No, it's a perfect approach by the sounds of it to me because it's how I work as well. Because we are all so unique, you know, not just as people, but that's then why your business looks unique and feels memorable yeah. because of the people in it, you know. Yeah. So I'm all a big people fan, me, you know. So yeah, me too. Also because I'm so nosy. So. <laughs> well, I- yeah. We call this curiosity. <laughs> Where do you hang out if we want to connect with you, Janine? LinkedIn is certainly the place to find me. And then, yeah, capoundymarketing.com. What do you want to leave us with, my lovely Janine? This is the thing I've been mulling over for, you know, for months and, and months now on the constant churn of our day of, you know, work, kids, work, kids, bed, work, kids, work, kids, bed. I think it is just a reminder that you can only do that for so long and the value that there is in the space that you that you can create for yourself. So even if it is only a 20 minute walk, even if it is, you know, a 15 minute kind of jotting something down, or maybe it is a whole day that like you do for your for your me time. I just think that is so, so important and under and underrated, especially right now. So mm-hmm. I guess it's just a, a it's a thought and a and a wish that everybody will, will allow themselves that, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a perfect thought for the day. Book that me time in your diary, just like I've started to do. But actually, don't move it for anyone, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> just a tip. <laughs> I book it in and they, oh, I'll just squeeze that one in there. <laughs> And that's it then. The day is no longer mine. Obviously, <laughs> then I'll book someone else in. No, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to finish off with and, and very, very important right now. Actually, it's always been important, but I think maybe we've realised it more with everything we've been going through. So thank you so much. Janine, I have loved our human conversation. I knew I would. (laughs) (laughs) But it's been really insightful. Listeners, I hope that you've enjoyed it. I think it's been lovely to talk to someone who's really wearing all those hats, you know, and and realising maybe, you know, some great ways to think of it and cope with it. And the fact that you can do it, you know, you still can be a mum and a wife, and a director of a successful business. So thank you for that inspiration, Janine. Um, And listeners, please do like and subscribe on whatever channel you've listened to us on. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And of course, you can watch us on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us, Janine. No worries. It's been lovely. Thanks, Jules. And we will see you all again on The Human Conversation. Ta-ta for now. You've just been listening to the Human Conversation podcast with Jules White. To find out more about the other work that Jules does, please visit her website, www.liveitloveitsellit.co.uk. And if you enjoyed the podcast, then please do leave a rating and review on the platform you use to enjoy her show. Thanks for listening and see you next time.